It's not funny to die for the liberty, for the freedom to speak freely without fears. It is not beautiful to suffer for the rights to use simple or single words, to write truthfully, to shed lights on everything, which is distasteful. Freedom of the press must be fundamental. It is the very foundation of true democracy, which is a form of wisdom. A great nation wants nothing less than constant criticism from the few. Bring the projectors, the murders, the cameras, the writers, the headlines, the headlights, of the intelligentsia, to educate the mass, the unemployed, and the underprivileged. The real heroes are never afraid to die, for the words, for the pens, pencils, brushes, and crayons. The dead heroes are our eternal champions. The sick cowards are afraid of the words. They are unreasonably angry because they kill and hide like rats, like rodents. The freedom of expression is absolutely warranted and is basically normal. Open up, open wide to speak out, scream and shout. This is fundamental in a true democracy. It is not funny or freaky to die for free speech. However, it's too early to die for the expression of simple words. What's your take on this case? You're well, somebody for whom religion is important, religion but also... Religion is important and free speech is very important. But uh, without freedom of speech, uh, we are dead. After objecting to proposed legislation that he says would violate his freedom of speech... One of the ways they're trying to do that is to censor speech. But what people are saying is that there's always this fine line, you know, between freedom of speech... Where does freedom of speech rank on your scale? Freedom of speech is something which has been all over the news lately, but what is it? Well, freedom of speech is the right to speak your own ideas, thoughts, and opinions without the fear of the government punishing or censoring you for it. In America, we have freedom of speech, or about as close as you can get to it without running into any legal loopholes. In a way, America only has limited freedom of speech. For example, you can't scream fire in a crowded movie theater, solicit bribes, make terrorist threats, slander another person, be obscene in public, etc. But what we do have in America is a right to our own opinion, and we have the means to express it, no matter how favorable or hated it is. For a law written over 200 years ago, it makes sense for there to be a commonly accepted definition for freedom of speech, but there's still a lot of confusion about what's expressing an opinion or breaking the law. That is why freedom of speech cases seem to always make their way to the Supreme Court, one of them being as recent as July 30th, 2018. Those cases also last for a long while, too, with the most recent one going on for exactly 419 days. So what we need now, more than ever, is a new definition for freedom of speech, which is more exact for when something is freedom of speech or breaking the law. And I'm going to attempt to lay out my plan for the new definition of freedom of speech, which is more inclusive of all the limits and restrictions of it. With your help, by spreading the word, we can try to get a movement started in an attempt to properly lay out what freedom of speech was always meant to be. Free speech is not an unlimited right, and because the First Amendment doesn't establish what those limits are, we've spent centuries debating what is and what isn't freedom of speech. I'm going to attempt to settle these arguments once and for all. Now, changing the meaning of an amendment isn't a simple task, so I'm going to start by building off the definition and adding things from there. Freedom of speech is the right to speak your own ideas, thoughts, and opinions with a few exceptions. Now let's add the exceptions. To start, I'm going to take a few rulings from previous court cases and add those to the list of limits. My definition of freedom of speech will not allow threats, words causing clear and present dangers, words used to convey information with the intent to interfere with the operation or success of the armed forces, words used by students at a school in a speech talking about an obscene topic, fighting words, which are just words that are so insulting that they would most likely start a fight, and making or distributing obscene materials. The list previously stated is a mix of nearly all Supreme Court cases since 1911 which resulted in an arrest, 
and all of them can be sorted into one of the six categories. Unfortunately, by only restating previously made judgments, there will be no change in the numerous amounts of freedom of speech cases which are still flooding the Supreme Court, so I'll also add a few more limits to the rules to help make decisions easier. Those decisions include speech that attempts to spark a widespread rebellion, speech that might keep someone from having a fair trial, and by that I mean biasing the jury, and speech that may reveal national security secrets. With everything previously stated in mind, the new definition of freedom of speech is Freedom of speech is the right to speak your own ideas, thoughts, and opinions, with a few exceptions, including, but not limited to, threats, words causing clear and present dangers, words used to convey information with the intent to interfere with the operation or success of the armed forces, words used by students at a school in a speech talking about an obscene topic, words so insulting that they would most likely start a fight, obscene materials, speech that attempts to spark a widespread rebellion, speech that might keep someone from having a fair trial, and speech that may reveal national security secrets. My newly formed definition of freedom of speech most accurately represents how we can make sure Americans have the right to say what they believe, and at the same time, keep American citizens safe from what others might say. Freedom of speech will obviously remain free, and still will continue to allow you to say your opinions and beliefs. There were some other things that I had considered making freedom of speech limits with, which I later shot down. One of the ones considered was burning the American flag, but I determined, in a way, it is the same as kneeling during the national anthem, just a step further. However, if the flag is burnt in an attempt to start a widespread rebellion, then it is still a freedom of speech violation. The same goes with burning a Christian cross or religious symbol in a public place which was a court ruling back in 2003 which stated freedom of speech will let you do that. Another limit determined decades ago was the fact that spending money on political campaigns is considered speech, and it is protected by the First Amendment, and it's beneficial to politicians and such that it stays that way. You also don't have to participate in the Pledge of Allegiance, as deciding to not take part in it is part of your freedom of speech. You can also, ironically, just not speak. Freedom of speech protects that too. In addition, the Supreme Court determined that you can use certain offensive words and phrases to convey political messages, advertise commercial products and professional services, wear armbands at a school to protest a war, among many other obvious things that freedom of speech will continue to let you do. Freedom of speech is still as present as ever in the United States, and it's as important as ever to make sure that people can exercise it. Earlier in the documentary, you may remember that I proposed a new plan for freedom of speech, and that if the plan is going to get somewhere, I'm going to need your help. How can you help? Well, all you have to do is spread the word and exercise your rights. People will know about my plan if you tell people about it. Remember, your freedom of speech can't be censored, and you can say nearly whatever you want with a few exceptions. So I would strongly recommend you exercise your freedom of speech, and that you stand for something you believe in. Because if you don't stand for something, you stand for nothing.